So today I want you to think about a standard deck of cards. So I'm going to ask you to um, pause the video and I want you to write down everything you know about the types of cards that make up a standard deck of cards. Well, I'm hoping that one of the things that you know is that a deck of cards is made up of four suits. We have two that are red, hearts and diamonds. And we have two that are black, uh, clubs and spades. Within each suit, there are 13 cards. So the 13 cards within each suit would include an ace, which is sometimes considered a high card and sometimes considered a low card, depending on what kind of game you're playing. Um, a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we get to the face cards, jack, queen, and king. So what that means is that uh, every suit has every type of card. So for instance, you can see all four suits have kings, all four suits have queens, aces, twos, etc. So what that means is that there are two colors in a deck of cards, black and white. There are four suits, um, hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. There are four of each type of card, um, four kings, four queens, four jacks, four tens, etc. And we go from ace through king. So now we could... Think about probability involving a deck of cards. Say that we randomly chose a card out of a standard deck. What's the probability of it being an ace? What's the probability of it being a red card? And what's the probability of it being a red ace? Pause this video for a second and answer those questions. All right, so let's think about this. The probability of being an ace. There are four aces in a deck of cards, and there are 52 cards altogether, so that would simplify to 1 out of 13, which again makes sense because out of every 13 cards, 13 cards make up a suit, one of them will be an ace. The probability of being red, 26 cards out of 52, or 1 half. And again, you don't really have to even think about this uh, probability could go straight to one half because you know that half the deck is red and half of the deck is black. So then the probability of finding a red ace, there are two red aces, the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds. There are 52 cards altogether. So that would simplify to one out of 26. So those three probabilities we just talked about are called independent events. Because when you pull a card randomly, it is not dependent on anything else. We pulled a card and it was an ace. That was one out of um, 13. If we pull a card and it's red, it's one out of two. Probability of pulling a red ace, um, two out of 26 or, or one out of 26. Those are considered independent events. Okay, so now we're gonna think about it differently. Let's say we pulled a card randomly. I'm going to pull this card. It is a three of clubs. The probability of getting a three of clubs is one out of, 20, uh, one out of 52, right? There's only one red club and, out of 52 cards. Now, what happens, though, if I don't put that card back in the deck? Now what happens to our probabilities? Well, they change, right? Why? Well, we have fewer cards here. Instead of 52 cards, now we only have 51 cards. So now we can think about probability a little differently. So if I were to draw a second card after we pulled that three of clubs out, what would now be the probability of pulling another club? Well, how many clubs are there in the deck? Well, originally there were 13, but now there are only 12. And originally there were 52 cards, but now there's only 51. 
This is called um, without replacement. We drew a card, but we did not replace it. So it affects the probability of what the next card drawn would be. Now, what would be the probability of pulling a heart at this point after this three of clubs was pulled? Well, we still have 13 hearts left, but we still only have 51 cards. So the, we have a greater chance of getting a heart now than we do a club because there is one club missing from the deck. All right, so independent events are events in which the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the second event. So let's say we had two independent events happening. We want to know what's the probability of drawing a two and then the probability of drawing a red. And these are independent, so they don't affect one another. That means we're replacing the two. So probability of a two. A two happens one out of 13 times because there are four out of 52, which simplifies to one out of 13. And then a red is one out of two um, because half the deck is red. And so the probability of these two things happening together would be one out of 26. We would multiply the probabilities to get the probability of both things occurring. So let's say we wanted to flip a coin twice, two times, okay? So let's think about what could happen if we, if, we if we flipped a coin twice. The first flip could be a heads, and the second flip could be a heads also. The first flip could be a heads, the second flip could be tails. The first flip could be tails, and then tails again tails, and then heads, right? This is the sample space for what could occur when you flip a coin twice. So I want to know the probability of getting two heads. Well, you can see that it only happens one time here, right? So it would be one out of four or one fourth. But could we also think about this as a multiplication problem? Anytime you flip a coin, the probability of a heads is one out of two. And if we're gonna want that to happen again, we would multiply them. And that's how you get one out of four, if you're not writing out the sample space. All right, so we talked about independent events. What about dependent events? Well, if independent events, the two things don't affect one another, dependent, the second event, is affected by whatever happens in the first. So if I pull the card, and I don't put it back in the deck, it's going to affect the probability of the second pull, okay? So let's say I pull the card. What's the probability that it would be a nine of clubs? Nine of clubs was one out of 52, right? So now my uh, card deck is affected. There's one less club and one less card, okay? So, um, Let's just say I wanted to know the probability then of, after we drew this, to draw a red card. Well, a red card now is no longer one out of uh, half the deck, is it? It is 26 out of 51 cards because we still have all the red cards that we started with, which is 26 of them, but we have one less card overall. So now we could simplify this and then multiply it and 1 out of 102 would be the probability of the next card being red. Actually, it's the probability of first drawing the nine of clubs and then drawing a red card. That would be the 1 out of 102. All right, so here's your assignment. Give it your best try and check your work when you're done. Good luck.